just not the same. All right, so before I get started, I should probably clarify that these goggles right here are the Skyzone O2Xs. The O2Cs are actually pretty much the exact same goggle, just without this little front facing camera here, which I'll get into a little bit later. But essentially, this first impressions review is gonna be about both models. Should I wear these goggles as I do this review? I feel like I should. It's gonna look ridiculous, but nice. All right, so I've had these goggles for about a week and a half now, and I'll start off right off the bat by saying that I completely agree with all the positive reviews that people have had on these so far. Right now they come in at around $285, or 260 without the little camera. And I honestly think they're one of the best goggles you can buy at that price range. And I'd recommend them to probably 90% of you guys out there. However, there were a few things that surprised me, especially being somebody making the switch from the first time from box goggles like these. There were a few differences that I guess I didn't expect to leave as big of an impact on me as they did. And I think some of those things would actually have a couple of you uh, prefer goggles like these instead. And I'll touch upon some of those things as well. I decided to buy the Sky Zones as an upgrade uh, from my EV800Ds. First of all, because I travel a lot with my drone, so I wanted something with a slightly smaller form factor. And the other thing was that the charging port on these guys slightly started to wear out and I was worried that it might break off and I just wanted to have another spare set of goggles before that happened. The thing that made the Sky Zones in particular stand out to me was that I really wanted to have an external module bay like this one that comes on Fat Shark goggles. Now, most goggles, including these, have their video receiver, which is what grabs the signal from your drone and puts it onto your screen. They have that built straight into the goggle. However, if you have a receiver module bay, you can replace it with a third party receiver that might perform better or have some extra features. Now, I didn't want to spend the money on high end analog goggles like the HDOs uh, because I do eventually want to make the switch to digital. So when I heard that Skyzone made a module bay add on that you can just clip onto the outside of your goggles and it costs an extra 10 to $12, I was pretty convinced. Now, the module bay hasn't come in the mail yet, so I can't really do a review on that, but that is one of the reasons why I originally chose these. But anyways, let's start taking a look at the goggles themselves. I'll start with one of the most obvious points. These look a lot cooler than wearing box goggles. To be honest, I feel like most FPV goggles look a little bit ridiculous, but I think it's undeniable that these look a little bit less ridiculous than wearing box goggles on your face. And I think that's a big selling point for a lot of people. Even though the value that these goggles provide is incredible, I think a lot of people just don't want this big thing flopping around on their face as they, as they fly their drone. The form factor on the Sky Zones is clearly smaller. Now, even though the box goggles aren't heavy, these ones are also noticeably lighter. Uh, both of them have diversity receiving modules, and what diversity means is that they take two antennas, and as you are flying, they will switch back and forth between them to always give you the strongest signal, and this is the standard for most FPV goggles these days. Now, these antennas that you see on the goggles aren't the original ones that came with them. 
If I'm being completely honest, I didn't even try the antennas that came with it. I threw them out right away. Uh, personally, I believe that a brand new set of antennas is one of the best investments that you can make. They're relatively cheap and the improvement that they'll make on the quality and range of your video signal is completely worth it. If you guys are interested, I'll leave links to the ones that I'm using in the description below. Anyways, like I mentioned before, these are obviously dual screen goggles. And the way they work is that when you have them on your face, the screens actually overlap in your vision. So it seems like you're looking at one screen instead of two. These being my first dual screen goggles, I expected the screen to be a little bit smaller. However, I was still really surprised at how big the difference seemed after regularly using the box goggles. And I'm not saying the screen on these is too small. It definitely gives you enough detail to see everything that you'd want to see. And the stock settings that it comes with give you a very bright and vivid picture. But because the field of view is so much smaller, it gives you this tunnel vision effect where it seems like you're looking at a TV screen down like a dark hallway. While on the box goggles, because the field of view is so wide, the screen just covers your entire range of vision and it feels like it's a lot closer, giving you a much more immersive experience. You almost feel like you are the drone when you're using these, while on these you feel like you're watching the drone. The thing is, I think this is partially a matter of what you're familiar with, and it's a similar experience to owning a smartphone. If you have a smaller, more compact phone and that's what you're used to using, and then one day you use your friend's phone with a massive screen, you might think, you know, why would anybody want to carry this around? My screen's definitely big enough. But then one another day you end up buying your own phone, which has a big screen and you get used to that. And you end up stumbling upon your old dinky phone. You might think, how did I ever use this? And honestly, after using these for a week, I no longer notice that tunnel vision effect. And I'm starting to realize why a lot of people might prefer these. Because the field of view is smaller, you can actually see more without having to move your eyes around, which could make you a lot more precise and would be a huge benefit. Also, I'm starting to realize that wearing these, I have a lot more confidence. I'm more willing to hit bigger gaps and do things that might result in a crash because I feel a little bit more disconnected with the drone. When you're wearing the box goggles, it's kind of like wearing a VR headset where things seem so real, you're less willing to take risks. I don't know if that's just me, but that's definitely something that I found to be true for myself. But this is all up to personal preference, and your FPV goggles are going to be one of the most personal items that you own, because different FPV goggles will fit differently on different people. Because of this, I think it's really nice that these goggles come with two different types of material for padding. They come with these ones that I'm using right now, and a thinner, more leathery material which feels a little bit more premium. I have a pretty big head, but I'd say a pretty standard face shape. And I personally find that uh, this more foamy material feels a lot more comfortable on my face. Unfortunately, the Sky Zones can't be worn with glasses, uh, which would be the same case for almost all dual screen goggles. However, I did notice that they do sell uh, lens replacements that can be used to fix certain vision problems. Uh, but if that is something that you're worried about, you should probably do a little bit more research. Depending on your face shape, there is a range of pupillary distances that the goggles support. There's sliders on the bottom that can be used to make the distances between the two lenses closer or further so that you can line them up perfectly with your eyes. I assume this range would work well for most people, but if that's something that you're worried about, it's definitely worth looking into before you buy. The benefit of having one big screen with the box goggles is that you're practically guaranteed to see the entire screen without a problem, regardless of your face shape. On the top of the sky zones, there's a built-in fan, which is used for defogging and dissipating heat. If you quickly tap the power button, and yes, these goggles do have a power button, it'll turn on the fan, which will start circulating the air within the goggles. And honestly, I think this is a really nice feature to have. I find it feels very soothing, and it's easier to keep my eyes open for extended periods of time when I'm really trying to concentrate on my flight. Uh, I think a lot of dual screen goggles have this feature, but honestly, I just keep it on all the time. Uh, I think it's amazing. Now, the one feature that makes the O2Xs especially unique is the front-facing built-in camera which they say is for easily observing surroundings uh, without having to take your goggles off. Honestly, the camera's pretty dumb. 
It's rather gimmicky and it's much easier to just pull up your goggles and do what you were gonna do than it is to keep the goggles on your face, find the button, and then try to navigate your surroundings. I guess unless you wanted to use the goggles as a part of a Halloween costume where you really wanted to keep them on your face or whatever other reason, maybe the camera would be worth it. But for the average consumer, I don't really see a point. Luckily for you, you can buy the O2Cs instead of the O2Xs, which don't come with the camera, and you can save yourself $15. To power the goggles, they come with this cable here, which supports 2S to 6S batteries. This is another big benefit of the box goggles, as they have enough space to fit a battery inside, so they can be used for a certain amount of time without an external battery, while these ones always have to be plugged in. The EV800Ds, however, come with a charging cable that really only supports 3S batteries, so I think that it's pretty nice that this one comes with an XT60 connector, so even if I forget my 3S that I usually use to charge my batteries, I can just plug in a regular flight pack and I'll still have a way to power these up. Okay, now for some of the more technical and internal features of the goggles. At the top of the goggles, there are six buttons, all with different functions. And one of the things that I actually dislike about these goggles is that each one of these buttons has two or three functions each, which make it pretty difficult to figure out which button does what. When you first buy the goggles, it's mostly trial and error trying to figure out what each button does because even if you read the manual, it just takes time to memorize all the functions. That's another benefit of these goggles is that all the buttons have a single purpose and they're neatly labeled at the top. But once again, there's a size difference. Anyways, one of the functions of the buttons on top is for DVR recording and playback, which can be used to record your analog video onto an SD card, which can be bought separately. The ability to play back your DVR into the goggles is especially useful when you crash your drone. You can use that recorded footage to help determine its location so that you can recover it. Another button activates the spectrum analyzer, which can help check signal strength in the field. If you are racing or flying with others, the spectrum analyzer will scan the range of frequencies that others could be using, and it will show which frequencies are currently being used and which ones are available. This is a great way to help you choose what channel to use with your drone to avoid interference. Another feature that these goggles support is head tracking. And even though head tracking is more commonly seen with gliders and airplanes, what it is is when you put on your goggles and move your head back and forth, it'll actually move the FPV camera on the aircraft, letting you look around in different directions and kind of give you that bird's eye view. They also support 3D cameras, which aren't that popular in FPV, but if you have a 3D camera installed, these will give you an image in 3D. Finally, on the bottom of the goggles, there's an HDMI port that you can use to plug into your computer if you wanna practice within a simulator. And there are also a variety of audio and video ports that can be used for various reasons. So hopefully this review helps some of you guys make a more informed decision on whether or not these goggles are right for you. Just remember that no matter what I say, uh, all goggles will fit differently on different people. So it's always best to try them out first if you have that luxury. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing. I'll definitely have more videos for you guys soon and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.